If you're new to scrapbook journaling, I just want to share with you what scrapbook journaling is and how to use mixed media in your scrapbook journals. Now, if you're a scrapbooker and you're a cut and paste girl, this sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming. You know what, at one point I was the clean crafter. I could only cut and paste and that was the extent of my scrapbook journaling. And that was more because it was number one, easy. Two, I was very limited for space, but yet I still wanted to create something that had a little bit more than just paper on it. I thought, you know what, this is the best way to do it. And I will introduce um, how you can scrapbook journal on your, your journal pages. Now, this journal page, you're like, uh, that's not fair. You're cheating already. <laughs> it's already done for you. I guess in this sense, it is kind of done for me. And, and I, I, the reason why I, I want to show it on this page is because we are currently in the Java journals, my, my crafting community and I. And what this is, is a DIY scrapbook journal that has four what you call signatures or notebooks. And um, each notebook uh, is either notes, one is for, I think, prayers, another one is for uh, your highs and lows of the day, but then there's also some uh, scrapbooking in there. So pages where you can, you know, cut and paste and put all your, your ephemera down as you'd like. But then there's also pages where I've added um, this one, like I said, this, this is actually was printed on there. Um, that, so you, I didn't do, I did that for you, but then I thought, you know what, let's add elements of inking and stamping. But now we want to go beyond that. We want to add those two together where we're doing more than just inking, stamping and, and placing die cuts on. Now we want to kind of pull them all together. So we're not just scrapbooking here where it's, it's just a scrapbook, where it's just cut and paste with a, you know, a little envelope here. And if you're interested in how I created this DIY journal, I'll put a link to that in the description box below if you're interested in joining us in this journey, because I always like to add stuff. <laughs> anyway, so you will get those in the your email for free if you decide to join us. But that's these are the, the notebooks here. And so the great thing with this notebook is that you can do all the artwork in there as is, or you can actually just, you know, pull out these tabs like this. And um, these are removable pages so that you can you can craft in it any way you like. And so, because I, I, I like this idea of, of crafting these journals, I want to show you what this looks like in this journal where you've taken your scrapbook elements and your mixed media elements of stamping and stenciling or adding other elements in there and then combining them all together. That's where it gets fun and maybe a little daunting for some. <laughs> so here we go. This is a beginner tutorial, which means that I'm going to just introduce this whole idea of mixed media with scrapbooking. All you really need aside from the inks that you have. So here's the inks that we've been using in the journal. And so all you need are your inks, uh, the, some of the stamps that we've been using, and then a paper towel and a plastic acetate. So you don't have a lot. I'm not introducing paints or anything like that, but we are introducing um, these two and then just a little misting bottle like this that I've gotten ink all over. Now, the first thing you want to do is, you kind of have to look at your paper and go, what am I willing to sacrifice here? This is just printer paper. Again, this is a DIY journal. So am I willing to sacrifice uh, the flexibility and the beauty of the fact that this is straight and sacrifice it knowing full well that once I put a medium on there, it could actually warp the paper. Now, if you are using a mixed media paper, like what you can do in this journal is take a mixed media paper and cut it to size and then slide it in there. And there, those could be your art pages or your mixed media pages, which I'm going to try at some point, but um, you can do that. But if you are limited and say, hey, you know what? I have these printed pages. That's what I'm working with. I don't have mixed media. Can I do mixed media on printer paper? Yes and no. Yes, you can, but you have to remember, if it is just printer paper like this, you run the risk of it bowing on you because you're adding a little bit of water. If you've printed this on thicker cardstock, for example, this here, the actual 
book covers of each of these notebooks. So this is one notebook here. Each of these I've used 65 pound cardstock. Now, when I went to put this beginner type of mixed media on here, it, it did okay, it fared quite well. There was a little bit of bowing in the paper, but again, it's thicker, so it was able to handle a lot of the mixed media. And I'll show you that here, I was kind of messing around here, and you can see just with um, a little bit of water how warped that became. Now, will that flatten out? Absolutely. You know, once it's dry, you know, you can just manipulate a little bit and then, and then you're done. Okay. I was just fooling around here with colors and I didn't like the colors. So anyways, this was just a, a, a loose leaf paper. So that's kind of what you run the risk of happening is that you get this bowing. Now, with that being said, you're like, no, Chris, I, I only have this on printer paper. Um, this is all I've got to work with. That's fine. We can work with that. So the first thing you want to do is to look at the paper. We're not going to do this side. We're just going to look at this side because that's pretty much all we're going to work on is just this here. You look at the paper and you say, okay, you know, where is my focal point? And because it's such a very small scrapbook journal, and I want this, this whole area to be the uh, art page, my focal point will be right in the middle. I don't mind that. For me, in this instance, I want to just put a frame with a picture on it, and that's fine. So you just want a framed picture with, with mixed media around it, you can go ahead and do that. Now, if for some reason you're like, no, I want my elements to be off to the side, that kind of thing, then that's the idea of um, using the rule of thirds. And that's when you divide the page into thirds, and then you pick out the corner of the page and you say that's where my focal point it will be if it's the top left and that's where you kind of concentrate your mixed media in that area so that it draws the eye inward now for this instance my focal point will right be right in the middle and that's exactly where i want it and that's okay but um, for now that's that's exactly where we're going to be working now with that being said if our focal point our scrapbooking element is here we want to make sure that the mixed media kind of diffuses out. So it's it's moving off in these directions here. And because this is for beginners, we want to keep it simple. A beginner usually will have just this. I have my inks, that's all I've got. And maybe I have a little paintbrush. It could be my kid's paintbrush. And that's all I have, but I want to dabble in it. I want to see if I like it before I start investing in paints and sprays and those kind of things. So. What I usually recommend, the only thing is that if you have a mister, and I know there's got to be a mister in your house somewhere, and you don't have to buy this one. This is Rangers. You can buy any bottle. I'm sure you have a bottle with a spray uh, nozzle on it and use that as your water spray sprayer. And if not, then you don't need that. You can just add a little bit of water to, to a little bowl like this, like a a little bowl like that and you're good to go. So that's all you need to do. Now, what I do is I look at my scrapbook journal. I'm like, oh, what are, what is the theme of it? What am I looking at? What, what kind of colors am I going to do for this background? When I look at my journal and my scrapbooking elements, I say, typically you'll see a lot of scrapbooking journals and scrapbooking uh, paper and they'll always have a, a general hue to it. They're like, oh, this is mostly browns. I would say there's always one or two pops of color within the journal. And in this case, our, our general aura is, is the browns with, you know, a, a little bit of blue or turquoise that kind of pops out throughout the journal. So I'm going to um, work with those colors. So the first thing you want to do is go, okay, what are my colors? What am I usually working with? I'll take, um, I'll take a little bit of vintage photo here. I was going to use walnut stain, but I'll, let's take some vintage photo here. I'm just going to put that on there. And just give it a good mix like that. You don't have a sprayer, you can just do this to it. Just give it a good swirl if you don't have a sprayer. And then using the kissing technique, again, we're, we're placing it in the middle here. Um, just want to deposit it like that. Put a little bit more down. And you can see just on regular paper how it really just soaks that up. Okay, so uh, 
just to let you know if you're not using um, an art art pages then you could you could run this risk of um, oops okay so I'm just doing that and you know it looks it looks terrible right now it looks absolutely like not fun but you can see because there's a little bit of water, you're starting the paper starting to bow a little bit, but not a big deal. Now, what I'm going to do, that was an oxide. I'm just going to take a little bit um, of a darker color, the walnut stain here, and we're just going to put it on here. And this is Distress Ink. Just put a little bit of color in there. <laughs> This is what you should expect if you're just using just regular paper, I guess. That's what you expect. And then obviously a little bit of a little bit of bowing in that area. And that's okay. You know, we can actually add a little bit more water here to this area here. Um, again. Now, if you find you're getting some pooling there, just grab your towel and just dab. Okay. And then you, you want to let that dry if you can. And if you have a drying tool, then go ahead and shoot, use your, your hair dryer if you need to. <laughs> dry it a bit. Obviously, there's bowing occurring, but that's, you know, that's okay. Not a big deal with that. And then what you want to do, and what you'll always do, is I like to add an element of text. And you can see here there's, there's text running through it already. So yes, I'm cheating a little bit because it's already printed on the paper. But um, I always like to, type, like to take a stamp. And one of the things I always make sure that I have in my arsenal are text stamps. Um, I just love them as background. I love them. I love how uh, it really draws the eye inwards towards your focal point. And so I'll usually, let's use this one here. This one's from Tim Holtz, his collection. It's the faded type, which I like. And um, now instead of putting it on a, a stamp block, what I like to do to give it that vintage look, to give it that um, mixed media look, what I'll usually use is is archival ink, something that's a little bit more rich in color and more saturated in color. Archival inks are really good for this. What I'll do is because I'm, I'm using some, some text, I like to add a little bit of, of uh, black in there or even uh, gray. There's gray here, but that's already gray. So we'll, we'll add some black in there and that's completely up to you. But um, adding a little bit of black is always good. Or you can use, um, if you want to stay with the browns, you can, that's up to you. But let's use some black. And then what I usually do is, instead of using a stamp block and stamping, I, I just kind of do this. And because our focal point is inwards, I'm going to make sure that my text is on the outside, okay? And then from there, Maybe put a little bit here. You don't have to. Just a little bit there, okay? So that, again, what we're doing is um, drawing the eye inwards towards your focal point. And then the next thing I wanna do is say, okay, you know, the center part is where I'm going to be placing my frame. So I want to add more elements to it. Usually it's not a text stamp, but something that has visual interest, something that coordinates well with the paper. In this case, it's a Java journal. So, so we're, I'm going to use these coffee stains here with archival ink. And I'm going to just stamp um, in these areas here, just like that. Okay, you can add a little bit more. I'll add uh, the small one here, just to this area here. What I'm really doing is using this idea is wherever I lay down a stamp, uh, a text stamp, I would usually follow it up with um, not another text stamp, but uh, a stamp that has a visual interest other than text to the area. And then that's when I'll just put those together. Now you're pretty much done here. That is, the, that is the simplest, to me, the simplest way of, of creating a mixed media without having to go too far as buying, you know, all your paints and your sprays and stuff. This to me is simple. And then, and then what I do is I just lay down, like I said, my frame. 
I love layering frames. So in my paper line, I have frames that just layer perfectly well like that. Before we adhere the frames, I'm just going to add a pop of color. And what I'm looking for are those areas where I have layered text on stamps. And that's where I'm going to add that pop of color. And I'm going to use Distress Oxide here because I find that it's just a little bit more concentrated in color and it'll allow you to add color that's a little bit more vibrant than your Distress inks. And I used a little bit of Broken China and Faded Jeans here. And I just blended them just a little bit just to get the desired color that I needed here. And if you don't need to be an artist, I just laid down some paint strokes and here you go. There is your mixed media insert in your scrapbooks. And again, like I said, you can see how it just bowed a little bit, but if you're okay with just a little bowing, then this can go directly into your journal and you have um, a little mixed media journal there. Now, if you're like, no, I, I want this look in my journal without having that bowing effect, then you can just use mixed media paper. Cut it out to size, cut it out that's just a little wider than this. You can actually place it down as a panel. You know, cutting it out to this size here and going, okay, cut that, that mixed media panel out and then and do all your the mixed media that you want to do. Now, my crafting community. <laughs> I have to say this, my crafting community says, Chris, that's too much work. I'm like, I get it. Cause half are of the, you know, simpler the better. And the other half are, you know what? Slap as much paint and as much mixed media. Let's see how much we can actually like layer on top, layer and layer, layer to get an amazing uh, result. And I'm, I respect both. So with that being said, should you not want to do this and you are part of my, uh, community, my scrapbook journal community, then I have this for you. I am, um, yeah, I get it. I, I myself can be one of those, I don't want to get messy. I, I cannot bring this, um, if I'm going on a trip, I can't bring all this around the world. So Chris, I need you to make it simple for us. And so this is what I've done. If you have um, downloaded the journal, and you don't want to do mixed media in your journal, I get it, then you know what, here, I've done it for you. And I've actually cut out frames for you. So uh, you can leave it like this as is, or you can add um, any of these scrapbooking elements that I've, uh, I have. I left it like this so that you can put your, your framed photos in, your photos in here in the frame, or if you just like it like this and you can add one of these elements in the middle, as you know, as your art page, you can do that too. But again, I, I do respect the fact that this might not be for everybody. And given time restraints and space restraints and the fact that it can get a little uh, messy, I get that. So this might not be for you. So if it's not for you, this could be for you. And I do want to give this to you, send this out to you. If you purchase the paper line, all these uh, mixed medias have been done for you and you can download that there. I also have more frames for you uh, should you want to layer and, and have, have more different sizes that, um, that I think you might need. So anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial where I show you mixed media for the beginner. Um, it's not too much, but just enough that says, you know what, I can do this uh, with very minimal stuff. So take care. I hope you have a fantastic week and we'll see you in my other videos. Bye.